I see Randy and Emil. And is there anybody else that I haven't acknowledged yet? It sounds Maybe like we're a, still short. Yeah, there's a 303-326 number. I don't know who that might be. This would be Wade at City of Aurora. Oh, okay, thanks, Wade. Yeah, Chief, we're too short, so I'll let you know if we have others join. Oh, actually, okay. we're one short because the commissioner's in the room with us, so. Oh, yeah. perfect. So All hopefully right. maybe we'll get one more. But right. in the meantime, we'll go ahead and proceed. We'll skip the approval of the February and March meeting minutes, and we'll jump right into our first net updates. And I believe that's you, Kim. Okay, the first thing I want to do is uh, let you all know that Tracy Murdoch, our regional lead, and Justin Shore, our lead for government affairs for our region, is on the phone. And then in the room with us, I'm pleased to let you know Garrett Doyle, who's um, assigned primarily um, to uh, uh, Colorado for AT&T, and then Roberta Robinette, who's the head of AT&T for Colorado, are here with us in the room. So I actually would turn over you, Tracy, and then to Roberta and Garrett to speak first. Thank you, Kim. And it's just, it's so exciting that AT&T could be there in the room with you. And I look forward to joining you next month. But as you said, Garrett Doyle is our lead consultant for Region 8 and our market manager for our area. So he'll be working closely with us and with you to, to roll out the, the state plan and continue to move forward. And of course, Roberta is part of the external affairs and she works closely with the governor's office as she has for quite some time. And I'll turn it over to them here in a second. But I wanted to just give you an update that, la that we're just three weeks into this 25 year contract with AT&T and things have been fast and furious. It's very, very exciting. But the first week, the leadership of both FirstNet and AT&T met in Indiana, Virginia to get to know each other, to understand what the, the proposal was, what their solution was, and to talk about a timeline and a way ahead. And then last week, all of the region leads, as well as the consultants, the market managers, all of the Tracy's and the Doyles, or Garrett's of the area that we came together, we were able to meet each other and talk about uh, where we were going, how we were going to move forward together, and it was just incredibly positive. And so, thus, we're here today, and we are also meeting with Brian on May 10th. at t wanted to make sure that they were meeting all of the stocks and giving that, that overview, answering questions, and then coming back again to the governance board or whatever additional meeting uh, Kim, you, and Brian would like us to do with you. There is a state plan review package that we are preparing for the stocks to help them prepare for delivery or to receive the state plan that will include a checkoff list just to help prepare it'll be a guide of here's what's going to happen as far as what the how to prepare for the plan review as well as the future adopters to gain information about what it's all about as well as a timeline starting you know, from webinar to a stock meeting to draft plan delivery, and then all the way to the final plan delivery that leads to that governor's review and that decision. These are all just kind of that, that flow, that target line. As we get closer, things are, are becoming clear where we're talking big generalities now, or at least getting, getting closer. So that's what we did last week, and it's a pleasure to be here with you today, and a pleasure to have Garrett and Roberta in the room. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Garrett and Roberta. Roberta, I'll let you introduce yourself, but I'll go. Um, hi, Roberta Robinette, State President for AT&T. Um, we're excited um, to actually be at our at the meeting today. We look forward to um, working with the board and, and moving forward and presenting next month. So thank you. Um, I'm Garrett Doyle, and as it's already been introduced, I'm on the uh, AT&T FirstNet teams. So that's my exclusive uh, function here at AT&T. You won't catch me in any of the retail stores working this weekend. <laughs> I am on the shopping. Um, but uh, I know uh, several of you, and we've met over, over the years, but in case you haven't, I'll just give a, a quick introduction. Um, I've been working in telecom the, really the past uh, 20 years here in the Colorado market. I live in Golden, Colorado and have uh, been for uh, a long time. 
I've kind of held a lot of different roles that have been sales, marketing, and technical. I've worked for a couple of the different major carriers, uh, be it Verizon, be it uh, Level 3, and my most uh, most recently, obviously, being here at uh, AT&T. Um, I come from our public sector group, and so um, I've helped out a lot of our public safety uh, uh, customers here in the market with working from you know, Colorado State Patrol, Douglas County Sheriff, uh, West Metro Fire, City of Lakewood, uh, Vail PD, uh, and so on and so forth. So I have some familiarity with the, uh, the challenges and the opportunities that we have, and frankly, that's what excited me about the opportunity I first met uh, was to see the things that I think we're going to be able to do. and. You know, I've seen read a couple of things that have put together, and I'm pretty excited about some of the, the things we're going to be able to offer to the public safety community, and, and I'm excited about the vertical focus that we're going to be able to get. Because, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, public safety is taking uh, off-the-shelf products and trying to repurpose them, and I feel like we've got this uh, moment in time to try to uh, change that up a little bit and have some stuff that's pretty specific. So um, as it said, we're pretty we're pretty new into this. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to believe it's been less than a month, but I do feel like we're getting uh, a lot accomplished. I'll be working closely with you and Brian as we get our uh, draft uh, state plan and portal uh, put together, and um, I anticipate uh, being able to interact with you frequently. Um, I hope that's good. <laughs> that's <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you letting me uh, uh, spend some time uh, hopping in here today. So yeah, um, thank you, Gary. Yeah, I was going to say, Chief, did, I don't know if um, we'd want to open it up. We have, you know, a number of items, but if there's any general discussion, um, since this is our first time with AT&T and FirstNet together, if you'd want to do that first, it's your call, Chief. Um, you know, I'm open to it. I don't think I have any just general discussion topics. Is there any other uh, commissioners that do? Sounds like nobody else wants to open it up, so why don't we just go ahead and run through the regular agenda, Kim? Okay, and then I did have a few other people join. Is there anybody else? Um, I see Bruce Romero. Anybody else on the governance body that hadn't identified themselves? If so, Kim, this is Chad. I'm here. Great, Chad. That's okay. great. We can we have a quorum now, Chief. All right. Well, thanks, Chad, for joining us. Now we can go ahead and back up to the approval of the both the February and the March meeting minutes. Everybody should have copies of those that Kim sent out. Um, so if there's no concerns or any correction to those, anybody want to make a motion to approve the February and March meeting minutes? This is Carl. I'll make that motion. You want to second that? Second, Kathy. All right. Let's move to second it. All in favor of approving the meeting minutes? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Meeting minutes are approved. And we'll go back into the update, and that's you, Kim. Okay, thanks, Chief. We actually have one other guest in the room, and we wanted to let him introduce himself. Hi, my name oh, is Carl Chris. Bonus. I'm currently, um, and thanks for allowing me to be here, uh, the police chief for the City of Federal Heights. Um, although I'm not really representing Federal Heights today in the City of Federal Heights, um, I'm formerly the direct, deputy director of the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. I've held that position for almost nine years. And as part of that, I was uh, on the uh, national uh, IACP Sieges Committee and served on the FBI Task Force for the Combat Council Working Groups and Search and, and all of those things. So throughout all of the uh, the first net um, since it was born, really, um, we've been uh, been briefed on it. And the IACP is having their committee meetings in May, uh, the, the summer IACP committee Sieges meeting. And so uh, I'm here just fact finding. Great. But that's me. So thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so uh, the next items, I'm just gonna step through a number of items and we sent out a few attachments, Ed, if you could step to the next, uh, I think, yes. So um, I wanna share, and again, I'll defer to, to Tracy or Garrett or Roberta, um, and I'll be sending these talking points out after, uh, but these are talking points given by FirstNet to the SPOT community. And so this is good information about um, what they're ready to share with regards to the partnership the network and some other points. Uh, there's two documents if you want to skip to the next one as well, Ed. And there's a uh, just a toolkit that we'll be using to help um, provide people information about the partnership and what the state plan process is going to look like in the coming months. And then, as Tracy mentioned, there's also a, a the official toolkit that we expect to be getting shortly. As Tracy mentioned, we'll be meeting with um, our SPOC 
team will be meeting with at and and FirstNet on May 10th. And then uh, we'll discuss it at the end, but we are going to propose a, a um, suggested in-person meeting that might last maybe a couple hours as opposed to our normal 30 to 45 minutes on May 18th, so our normal date. I'll try and find a location outside of downtown, but somewhere along the front range here. And uh, it'll be in-person with FirstNet and AT&T. And um, we'll discuss that more at the end. Um, the next item that we want to share, uh, bear with us just a minute. Just, there we go. Just, yeah, scroll over one. No, nope, one more back. There we go. Uh, sorry, the other way. <laughs> okay, there we go. That one, and then, I'm sorry, Ed, my apologies, I thought the spot when we hadn't gone over yet. So the next one, yeah, there there we go. Yep. No, yeah, yeah, sorry, my apologies. So the, the next item that we want to discuss is, um, I sent this out in uh, soft copy with your documents. Uh, this is a what we call a high-level state plan analysis guideline. So FirstNet, uh, we offered to um, provide them input on what we are expecting to see in a state plan. Um, and while we have stepped through a number of what I'd call technical and operational items and questions, that is input that we provided to Tracy that were, were resourced from other states and was resourced through our working group, we wanted to come up with a high level document as well and let um, FirstNet and AT&T know what our objective is. And, Obviously, our, our, our high-level objectives are the best network in terms of coverage and cost and capabilities for Colorado's first responders, and then how we would expect the state plan to address those things. Um, I'd like to say maybe we're a little bit different than some states in the sense that we are really looking to see information in our state plan that can be compared to our, the alternative plan that we um, have gone to RFP for. So we really want to be fair and have an apples to apples comparison. So Chief, I guess what we'd like to do, um, I don't know how many people have had time to look at this document in much detail, but um, if there's anybody who has any questions or concerns about the content, we could briefly discuss that here, but then you could send the comments back to our team and we could um, finalize them in a draft that we'll get out um, back to the group for the blessing. I don't think it's a document we have to take a motion on necessarily, um, but I'll leave that to you, Chief, on how you want to direct that. No, I don't think we have to take a motion on it, but I do think it'd be good to let's set a deadline for people to get comments back to you guys so we can go ahead and finalize this document. So then, every, then that way we can provide it and everybody knows kind of what our expectations are. So how, how soon do you need it back, Kim, to start working or to finalize it? Um, maybe I could have it back uh, by close of business next Wednesday, and then that'll allow us to finalize it and get it to uh, FirstNet and AT&T pretty quickly thereafter. Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's set Wednesday close of business as a deadline, and then we'll send it. Just send out an email reminder to everybody with the date on it, and that'll hopefully remind everybody to go through the documents if they haven't, and then we'll proceed from there. Okay, great. Hey Kim, this is Chad. Um, yeah. Confirm that that document is for for use to evaluate the RFP uh, responses, or to be used for comparison's sake afterwards. Uh, well, some of the information um, is what we will be evaluating RFP responses on, but really, it's meant to be used. Um, it, it's meant to provide to FirstNet and AT and T, so they understand what we are hoping to see in a state plan. So we are getting an apples to apples comparison. So kind of all the stuff that we talked about at the last meeting. Yes. Okay. All right. And um, I kind of jumped the bullet, but to your point, Chad, this really is what we think is a synthesis of that meeting that occurred on April 5th. And I'll take a step back and ask if anybody has any thoughts or comments on that meeting in general. I guess not. Okay. Uh, the last uh, general update we wanted to share is, 
yep, I think you got it, Ed Singh. Uh, the next item is actually a document that was shared when Brian uh, last week was invited to a SPOC meeting in Virginia, and there were about six or eight states there. Uh, it was Virginia, Pennsylvania, Alabama, New Mexico, um, Washington, D.C., and a few other uh, mid-Atlantic states. And they had a meeting uh, involving the states, and then there was a representative from the National Governors Association present. And they just discussed about uh, commons, questions, concerns, strengths, and weaknesses of um, the, the process to date, and uh, similarities that states were expecting across these various topic areas. I believe that this information is actually being packaged up by the Virginia SPOC to be shared with FirstNet and AT&T. We don't have permission to share it, but we were told that we could share it with our governance group. So that's this document. It's meant to be shared just as information only for, um, for all of you as stakeholders. But know that Brian has been participating in those conversations, so we understand where we have um, similar pain points or otherwise with other states, commonalities, information that we want to share. Uh, one item of note I do want to share is that the, the uh, National Governors Association stated they were told by FirstNet that um, there were only a few disgruntled states out there that were causing trouble, so to speak. Um, they didn't say who it was the person that said that, so Justin and Tracy, I can't tell you who said that, but that's what the NGA representative said to the state. But then after speaking with the state, and um, not just the states present at that meeting, but states in general, they're finding that there's many, many states with a lot of the same concerns that we and some of these other states have. So. Um, I think it'll be great that this document is shared with FirstNet and AT&T and that hopefully you're not thinking that it's just a few states who are doing their due diligence that are disruptors in the process. So I'll just leave it at that. Perfect. No, Kim, we, we appreciate that. And, and yeah, I, I am upset if anyone did say something like that. So we, we look forward to seeing this doc and, uh, and looking at it closely. Excuse yeah, me. I believe it's Sorry, I've lost it. Yes. <laughs> No, no problem. And I believe it's going to come through the Virginia SPOC. So, um, yeah. Great. We'll look for it from Tom. Appreciate it. Okay. Sure. Okay. So that's the general uh, first net update I have. That was the last document, right, Ed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So any questions on general first net news before I continue on to uh, our RFP process? Hey, Kim, this is uh, Randy. Could I maybe just interject a question which doesn't need to be answered today, but maybe just since uh, AT&T is, is, is present. And one of the questions that we um, sort of asked at IWCE and, and for you guys to think about is, is um, just the format in which you're going to provide coverage information. Is it a list of cell sites? Is it a um, kind of a GIS submission? But, um, you know, since we're planning on trying to do an apples to apples comparison among, you know, d different, uh, you know, parties and kind of our expectations, you know, it'd be great to have some visibility as soon as possible into the format in which you'll be providing uh, information with, with the uh, draft state plan. Tracy, I'll take a stab at it. Um, that hasn't been released. To me anyways and so at this point that will be in the draft statement of the of the state plan there will be a, a call coming up uh and a guidance call that you could certainly ask an inquiry uh, about that at this point okay did you catch all that randy i did yeah thanks very much okay uh tracy did you have anything you want to add no, I think you got it. I think there are a lot of these details are still being um, discussed and worked out, and the place will be that, that state plan. And then also when we meet with you on the 18th, there can be further discussion there. But I've okay. made note of that, so thanks. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, so the uh, RFP, the RFP, as you all know, was published on March 23rd and responses are due on May 8th. Uh, we did have our clarifications call last week. We had a decent response. We were pleased um, with uh, the participation. Lasted about 30 minutes. I did send you a link if you have any interest in listening to that call. 
And um, we have also had multiple requests under NDA to access the data that was part of that RFP. And so we're confident that we should have more than one response. Um, and then we will be able to let you know the number of responses. We won't be able to obviously share um, the detail on that. Um, we have already timelined our uh, assessment process. And for those of you that have indicated you're willing to participate as scores or as SMEs, I will expect an email from me in the next day to um, let you know how that process is going to look and our proposal date to participate um, in the assessment. Uh, and know that it can be done remotely as well. We will not be requiring face-to-face -face meetings for the phase one qualification um, piece of the RFP, RFP assessment. Uh, our intent is to qualify responses by early June and to have that list published on uh, the Colorado website at that time. And then that will align us well with hopefully a view to the draft state plan and then the draft state plan will likely be, we're hoping, be indicative of whether we need to initiate phase two of the RFP immediately or if we are able to wait, depending on what FirstNet and AT&T share about their process. So um, any questions on that? Okay, then I'll go on to the working groups. Uh, our working groups have met a few times in the past month, and we are now likely going to keep up with our every two week cadence at this point. Um, if you have any interest in participating in those working groups as governance members, please let me know and I will send you that information as well. Just know that these groups are supporting, um, specifically the technical working group now will be some supporting some of the activities that Signals will be doing with regards to market research and considerations about specific technical elements of, of the uh, state plan. Uh, so they'll finally have some work to do on, on uh, uh, the state, statewide behalf. And then the last item is I'll quickly turn it over to Randy and Emil. We're actually uh, going to be kicking off some um, survey instruments again and some uh, targeted interviews on some technical elements. And I wanted to let Randy just speak to what that process is going to look like quickly and then email as well. Great. Uh, thanks, Kim. Yeah, so this is, uh, so basically just a, a, a heads up that we're, we're basically doing, uh, you know, trying to drill down on a lot of the um, questions which we know have been of, of, you know, great interest to people about, about um, you know, pricing and distribution and how you buy product and so forth. And what we're trying to, to do is uh, we're embarking on a series of, of sort of one-on-one -on -one interviews with people who are, you know, very knowledgeable um, and, uh, you know, sort of in, in, in the procurement space. Uh, and then we're, we're, we're going to do a, a quantitative survey, which will um, feel a little bit like what we did in 2015, where, where we looked at, at um, you know, a broad range of issues, which, you know, largely paralleled what, what FirstNet asked everyone to do on a national basis. Um, but this will uh, drill down into um, some more specific areas. And it would, would be asking about things like how, how quickly, you know, will you adopt and what, what considerations, uh, you know, will come into play. You know, does the cost of equipment, is that a factor? So we'll be exploring a, a lot of those things. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then uh, maybe, Emil, you can run through kind of the multifaceted piece that, uh, that you have underway. Sure. So uh, most of our outreach will be targeted towards the technical working group for uh, uh, FirstNet Colorado. And in that, uh, we want to uh, identify some of the key issues, or we have identified some of the key issues that we want to have considered in the state plan. And um, also uh, to get uh, information from you um, uh, on the public safety user side, um, what uh, we need to address and make sure is addressed in the state plan. So this encompasses a few uh, key technical areas. The uh, first one is network hardening, understanding um, what's necessary for that um, with regards to uh, availability um, and um, reliability of the network. Uh, what is expected under uh, certain uh, either uh, human events, uh, hopefully the Broncos will win another Super Bowl, so um, uh, events like that, or, you know, snow season, now we're getting into mud season, um, when we uh, have uh, key issues that we need to address specific for the state. 
Uh, the next one is a uh, local operational performance expectations, and this is really looking at QoS, um, quality of service, how that's instantiated in the state, what your expectations are, what the limitations are of the standard, and um, uh, who we feel needs to have access to the system and, and what levels will be available. Um, network SLAs and performance, so we'll be looking at um, the metrics uh, that you're utilizing right now, uh, best practices and identifying what those metrics are for SLAs. And so with a network um, like this for the National Public Safety Broadband Network, how do we correlate those hardening requirements to an SLA? How are they identified? How are they met? How are they reported? Um, what's the expected turnaround time uh, for enforcement? The other one is a public safety security or cybersecurity with regards to uh, interacting with your enterprise network. Uh, 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 accessing uh, specific databases that are secure, um, what needs to be done uh, specific for your data to protect it from others or make it available to others. Uh, devices, uh, we'll be talking uh, uh, to different users uh, about devices and we're really interested um, in the whole gamut, both in the urban areas where you may have large contracts and procuring uh, large devices and managing them with a certain management software, um, or from the uh, rural areas where uh, you may not be able to support uh, devices uh, for all of your users. And what does a bring your own device type um, system look like? How will you manage that? How will that integrate into your daily operations? And then applications. What applications are you guys using currently that are homegrown that you've had to either develop or integrate uh, into your network? So. Uh, these are, you know, the list of areas that we think are germane to uh, a state plan from a technical perspective, and we'll be reaching out to you, all of you here in the next probably two or three weeks, I believe, right, Kim? I think that's it. Yes. Uh, thank you, Nemo and Randy and um, Tracy and Roberta and Garrett, just so you guys know, this is all information we are going to provide to you guys, and we'll, we'll, we'll be work that's done quickly in the next two months. So. Um, knowing that you guys are still, you know, drastic plans may already be out, but that information is all provided to you. So, so, so Kim, this is Tracy. Right. It looks like you know this reviewed kind of the high points of the state plan review matrix. Do I understand that right? I'm sorry, what? It sounded kind of like email just reviewed the kind of the high points of the state plan review matrix and kind of those areas that are important in the state plan. Yes, and what we're doing is we're going out and just, uh, he's going to do some targeted interviews to understand um, current operations within the state in some of those areas or expectations. Thanks. Yeah. And when did you expect that that information would be made available to us by chance? Um, hopefully within the next month to six weeks at the most, yeah. Uh, yeah. Generally, try not. Yeah, no, they're, they're um, finalizing their tools they're going to use to seek that information. They have to turn it around very quickly because we know that, you know, everything's already on the uh, conveyor belt, right, <laughs> ready to be delivered. So. And that's, that's going to be a, a report readback? Right, yeah. Consolidated? Right, yeah, yeah. And it's really information to help us also create, maybe I'd like to say a gap analysis for understanding if there's expectations on the user's end um, that uh, that don't end up in the state plan, you know, the information doesn't end up addressed for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And um, we, are, we aren't creating a situation where they expected it to see it and simply didn't know it was gonna be there and, and what the expectation was either way. So, yeah. Hi, Tony. Hey, Kim. Yeah. Uh, this is Sheriff, that again, I, I, sorry to interrupt. I, I'm going to have to drop off to go to another meeting. Is there is there anything else that needs to be voted on I need to get proxy to anybody for? Uh, yes, there will be one minor item at the end if you could give your proxy to someone. I, or, or we can just skip that item if you want, Kim. Okay, sure. Um, basically, uh, we discussed two months ago that the PSDS asked to have an official partnership with FirstNet Colorado. And so I just need your approval. We've already effectively been acting in that partnership. They have a document that you, has been shared. Um, I'd like your approval to have Brian sign it on behalf of the FirstNet Colorado Governing Group. Absolutely. We need somebody to make a motion, correct, Kim? Yes. So moved. It's shared. Okay, it's seconded. Seconded. All right, it's moved and seconded. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Looks like that motion passed. So, Kim, you can go ahead and have Brian sign that. And, Chad, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.
All right. Thanks, guys. See you. And who was the second? Joel Estes. Thank you, Joel. Okay. So, um, uh, Chief, I think that's it for item number two, the first net update. All right. So then we're up to Ed. Uh, we'll just uh, give you some highlights. Uh, what we've, uh, what we have been doing is we've been trying to engage uh, our stakeholders in the nine all hazard regions uh, with about uh, 15 to 20 minute meetings. We've also been going to uh, meetings such as uh, SimTac. Uh, yesterday, uh, Kim and I were at the uh, Colorado State Fire Chiefs, and what we're trying to do is just, you know, give them that, you know, kind of uh, prime the pump that things are going to start moving quickly. And uh, we'll start to have to uh, do those face-to-face uh, -face engagements. Um, just because of the time, we are going to focus on the nine all-hazard regions and the two tribes, uh, and then we will uh, we will go and do uh, you know focused um, meetings uh, whenever anybody is uh, interested or they need some some more. So you'll see a lot about that. Um, we actually had a blog out um, in our last newsletter, and uh, we will keep updating that blog. So that as dates uh, come on the calendar or fall off the calendar, uh, we'll keep you informed about what's going on there. And uh, by our next meeting, uh, you'll have a strategic plan of how uh, we'll proceed. Um, as we get a little more clarity about you know, timing, uh, that is uh, really key. Uh, also, I will say that we are working with uh, uh, organizations like CML, Colorado State Fire Chiefs, and a lot of those folks to uh, get an engagement uh, a little bit greater than what we've had in the past. Uh, you know, in some of them, we've been able to get in front of a significant amount of people, but there have been some of the conferences where um, maybe we've only been able to get in front of 15, 20, 25 um, people at a time. And so uh, there is a, a lot of the groups like CML, we've got some conversations going on where they're gonna let us show uh, a video that talks about their engagement and the importance of their engagement. Uh, which will be followed up by a webinar and uh, the only thing that will be on the agenda is this uh, whole situation about the uh, national public safety broadband network and the implications for the state of colorado which will then be followed up by uh, how do you get involved so uh, we should be able to give you more details we've got conversations going like uh, going on like that with cml colorado state fire chiefs and i am trying to engage everybody that will play in that space uh, to give us uh, access to a uh, maximum number of stakeholders. So, uh, any questions about that before I move on? Uh, AT&T, we'd love to be a part of that and to be able to help with that outreach and be able to, uh, you know, start to be able to share some of the story, especially as state plans and portals become available. So, can I coordinate with you? Or? We'll keep you informed, yeah. Just, yeah, let me know. Uh, um, I'll let you know what the schedule is, what we're doing. All right. Great. Any other questions, comments? All right, um, so I forgot what I put in here, so uh, it might be a surprise uh, to me as well. Uh, a special, uh, thanks Go goes, <laughs> special thanks goes out um, to uh, Sarah. Sarah has been working very uh, diligently. Uh, this is something that, as you all know, uh, we've uh, wanted to do as a refresh on the website, and uh, very exciting. Um, she's been working very hard with the OIT team. And uh, for those of you who are online, you can see uh, what it's going to look like. The beautiful thing about this is now you can go to any device that you're on, and it will adapt to that device, and uh, which our current website doesn't presently do. Sarah also took it upon herself, and she took some initiative, and she produced a short video. And uh, if everything works right, we're going to play that for you, at least the audio, if you're not... Uh, if you're not on with me, and of course it's not going to play, my computer's not going to do it right. So let me try and play it from the website. We'll see what happens. That's the wrong video. Or is it? Love when technology doesn't work. Let's try it this way. We've also our made some changes in the form of engaging everyone across the world. Uh, it's also a great place to watch the news and what's happening with FirstNet Colorado and FirstNet. This will be better. Hang on. There we go. Colorado's brand new website. Our website will help inform and engage everyone across the state and provide even more ways for you to share with us your opinions on the process. 
The website will also be a good place to see how far we have come and provides a chance to look at some of our highlights from the past. We have also made some changes and wanted to take the opportunity to show you our exciting new features. The homepage will fill you in on all new updates and content. It's also a great place to watch for news and what's happening with FirstNet Colorado and FirstNet National. On the timeline, you will see the newest updates available along with either pictures, a video, link to articles, or social media. Above the timeline, you will see links to our news blog posts. Our blog is an amazing way to stay connected to in-depth and interesting updates and the newest gadgets and emerging technology. The navigation bar along the top will take you to other pages, featuring information about who we are, the process so far, the outreach and education we have completed, information on the governing body, resources that will help you get up to speed on the NPSDN, or even past presentations. On the process and engagement tabs, you will see two more timelines. These timelines are the best and quickest ways to see highlights of things we have accomplished and where we have been. As always, if you ever have any questions, inputs, or comments, please feel free to contact us on our website, our social media sites, or even comment on our new blog. Yes, very nice. Thank you, Sarah. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I had to really lower my voice to get it to sound that good on this. <laughs> so, uh, one other uh, one other highlight we want to uh, share with you is that uh, we are going to go to the format. Um, you know, we have we've had a, a, a feed on our website so that you can get uh, you know a little blog that we've done. But one of the other things that uh, Sarah's done for us is uh, she's uh, cleaned up and we've gone to a format called Blogger. And so, uh, especially now, as we're moving very quickly, um, this is gonna be the way where you can go in and check uh, daily to see if there's anything new. I can't imagine we'll send stuff out daily, but there probably will be uh, information coming at you every two, three, uh, maybe four or five days. So anyway, um, uh, really good and, um, Go ahead, Sarah. The, the benefit of Blogger here and the, the intention behind it is there's an opportunity for you as stakeholders to comment on the type of information that we're putting up there. The hope is that these posts are actually a conversation with you. So please do go on there. Feel free to comment. We do have some comment guidelines, which we'll work on putting together for you all to see. But um, it is a really good opportunity for you guys to get more involved in an interesting way. Good, very good. Um, so uh, let me see, I don't know what else I put here. Um, just to let you know, we still, uh, we're out uh, on the national front. Uh, we, uh, I'll be speaking next week or next month at the 5G North America, and we've got some other events. Um, if uh, those of you have seen the article in the uh, Colorado uh, Firefighter, uh, magazine. They've asked us to write again uh, in June, so we'll be talking about uh, the implications for structural uh, uh, firefighting. And uh, we've also got some really exciting things coming up. Uh, Dr. Uh, Harvey Gates of C. Boulder has asked to uh, um, do a joint uh, article with myself, and so uh, we'll be putting that together. And then uh, there's a national magazine that's asked us to write an article as well. So anyway, we'll keep you informed as that stuff comes up. Uh, but that's really um, all I have. Are there any comments, questions, or does anyone want to tell me an old war story? <laughs> Ed, just wanted right, to say how much I uh, appreciate that firefighter article. It was a great one already in there. So looking forward to more. Thank you. And I, I wish I could claim that uh, it was all me, but uh, I have some great editors here, uh, including Kim and Sarah and Brian. So. They make me look really good, better than I am. Thank you. All right. All right. So, so if you're done, Ed, then we'll move on to Adcom. Joel, do you have any updates for the Adcom site? Uh, we're kind of in a holding pattern right now, Chief, so uh, no updates at this time. Man, that's my favorite update. <laughs> All right. Jim, do, any updates on the legal front? Um, the only thing that we have, we still have Kissinger and Feldman looking at um, if there's anything in the statutes or constitution that would prevent the governor from making a decision with or without the legislature, um, especially anything that's uh, financially binding for the state. So uh, I expect we'll have that review done pretty quickly. All right, perfect. So now we're on to old business. We already took care of the first item. So. Is there any other old business? 
I guess not. Not hearing any. So we'll move on to new business. And there is some new business. Yes, so um, as was alluded to earlier, we'd like to have the May meeting potentially be a little bit longer, and um, we aren't actually going to be able to hold it in Boulder. FirstNet is going to invite us later in the summer, likely, when their lab is more built out. Um, but I had an offer already from Arapahoe County to host it potentially down at South Metro Fire or a facility in that area. Um, but we'll find a location outside of downtown, but somewhere in the Denver metro area. And that would include representatives face-to-face -face from FirstNet and AT&T. Well, and <clears throat> Tim, this is Roberta for folks on the phone. Um, we'd be happy to work with you if you need a place that we might be able to host as well. Okay. So we'll and work on a location one. in the interim. Yeah, and I know, Chief, you have one too. So, And I, I got, know... I got uh, a bunch of them. Yeah, and, and West Metro Fire is an option as well. So. So I guess that would be discussion for the group if they um, certainly always having web and conferencing capabilities available, but encouraging as many people to attend in person as possible and obviously travel would be accommodated for those from out of the area. And it's still at 2.30. Uh, 2.30 or we could change the time to a little earlier. That I would argue could be a point of discussion as well. Yeah, I can make the 2.30. I'll have a hard time making anything too much earlier. I'm sorry, Carl, you said not much earlier? Yeah, because I do find I'm going to the broadband summit. Um, and I get fly back that day. Oh, okay. So, Chief, we could keep it at 2.30 and just maybe schedule it till 4.30? Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be fine. And then we'll just make sure, like you said, we'll put it somewhere not downtown, but somewhere with a bunch of parking, too. Yes. Okay, All so right. I guess um, we'll just go with that. How does that sound? That's great. <laughs> um, the only other thing... To... Oh, go ahead, sorry. My no, go ahead. go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, the Statewide Public Safety Radio Summit is on May 3rd. Um, we'll be co-presenting with FirstNet and Tracy. Have FirstNet and at and determined your representation at that event? No, I'll get you that information, Kim. Okay, um, our session is from 1.45 until 2.30 on uh, May 3rd, which is the Wednesday, um, just so you're all aware. And there's actually some good, if you aren't already signed up for it, I will forward the information to the group. But there's also some other good sessions um, from industry on convergence of LMR and LTE and then mission critical communications in general. Uh, Carl mentioned there's at the APCO Broadband Summit in DC, May 16th and 17th. If you want to go, we do have funding to pay for that, as well as the PSCR conference, which is the R&D conference for public safety communications in San Antonio, June 12th through 14th. And then we expect to have a SPOC meeting um, sometime in June. FirstNet is still determining the date. Tracy, will there be a limit on the number of people that can come to that first date? Yes. Okay. Uh, Chief, that's I think all we have. All right. Anybody else have anything else before we wrap up? All right, doesn't sound like it. So we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you everybody for coming. Bye. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Chief. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Oh, thanks for coming.